This is Sunday morning and uh, it's very calm outside today. This is the middle of August. Okay, we're going to walk through the Sir Optimist parking lot. Stuff that people leave as they try to clear out, they're probably moving out of town. And this is somewhat common about once every other week right now. Someone leaves something at the Sir Optimist. They've been closed since April. They have lots of inventory still. All of this fencing is related to this junkyard, which is owned by the port of Anacortes. And they plan on uh, digging up about 20 feet of depth of the soil to remove the contaminated soil. This was once used as a holding area for Shell Oil Company and their own little dock just at the water, water's edge there is where they uh, brought in crude oil, <clears throat> held it in tanks that were on this site, and then trucked it over to their uh, uh, refinery that's on March Point. This whole beach along the side here is the beach of N, N, letter N, Street Park. And then the buildings in the background there belong to Trident fish processing plant and these old deteriorated uh, piers are a bird sanctuary so they don't tear them down and actually once we get onto Curtis Wharf here you can see this collection of uh, lifeboats I don't know who owns this I've talked to the guy several times but I don't know what his business is but he's got one two three four Four various lifeboats. This orange one, biggest one, is a Russian-made lifeboat. Uh, a Russian Cyrillic language is uh, listed in it. This is Curtis Wharf, and uh, the history behind it is that the brother-in-law of Amos Bowman, who founded the town, <coughs> established a uh, commercial wharf here and named it Curtis Wharf. And it was the real economic uh, light link from the timber coming in off of uh, Fidalgo Island here that was being cut down. There was sawmills, so they turned it into dimensional lumber and then shipped it away on, from these wharfs. This also was a storage place for coal, which was <clears throat> used in the powering of ships and generators. It, this is in the 1880s um, and 90s. And now, 130 years later, the port of Anacortes owns this property. They don't take great care of it, but um, it's an interesting property uh, because it's an active uh, commercial port, commercial in the sense of industrial port. Because it's crabbing season right now, people throw crab, rat, crab rings or crab nets off the Curtis Wharf and uh, they check their crab rings oh, once a day. This guy's throwing his out right now, or he's going to rebate it probably. There he goes. This is another crab processing place, much more modest, uh, obviously not as active. Um, and they also pump seawater up and keep the crabs alive. And uh, they're obviously not busy right now uh, in contrast to the other place. This is the Dakota Creek uh, dry dock. This is a rare time that there's not a boat in there. This is a closer view of dry dock end number one on this dry dock. I'm not quite sure where they have that extension welded on out there. We're about to look at the O Street uh, outfall for the storm drains. 
some storm drains, several of them on O Street are connected to this. It's a rubber pipe, heavy walled rubber pipe. Um, it flexes up and down. And right now the tide is going out and it'll expose the end of this pipe uh, in several more hours. So waiting. Okay, we're going to walk along the sandy beach of End Street. Gosh, look at that, crabs everywhere. Here's a uh, Dungeness crab that a bird dropped on top here and then ate his guts out. I bet she picked up this crab from uh, the crab place. Here's another outfall right here for the end, like Nora Street. Since it's in August, middle of August, usually we have someone camping here in this little parking lot overnight. They're either on their way to the San Juan Islands and they park their RV here and stay overnight. And these tanks right here are diesel fuel tanks. Every day they have a guy turn up and he drives his truck to his customers and delivers to them diesel fuel. This house on the corner with this uh, aluminum uh, little trailer for a, uh, a bathroom. It's the, 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 the Port of Anacortes owns this. They bought it last year, but they just do nothing to keep it up. In fact, it's the only house on the entire block that's ignored quite like this. And there's a tenant in it who are keeping their people away currently uh, because of the coronavirus. But this is a, it's funny, the, the, the Port of Anacortes, they get to uh, sell municipal bonds, they have financing methods, so they have resources that a normal homeowner would not have, and yet they leave it in such a dis, uh, unsupported, uh, non-maintained, unmaintained uh, condition, at least outside. All the other neighbors are doing something to keep their place up, spending money, spending time. In fact, this property right here, right next door to them. The woman that's lived here for, oh my goodness, uh, 50 or 60 years, she just died uh, several months ago. And yet the property is still being maintained. This is Brent's house. I don't know if he's inside or not. Might be. He's running a little marine uh, engineering business out of it.